Let's now go to Andrew Bowie, who is the uh, Minister for the Department of Energy, Security and uh, Net Zero, uh, because there's so much to talk to you about, Minister. Um, uh, the, the climate situation, which uh, we're experiencing in, in Europe uh, at the moment, how it's going to affect us. And you're doing your, your own work as regards climate targets. Now, there are those who will say too little, too late. What would you say in response to that? Yeah, I'd say that that's nonsense. You know, this country has, in fact, led the world in terms of cutting our climate emissions. We've actually cut our CO2 emissions by 48% whilst growing the economy by 65%. No other nation in the world has achieved that. We've cut our emissions faster than any other uh, G7 nation. And today we're launching Great British Nuclear, which will help us reach our net zero targets, but also, crucially, improve and increase our energy security and ensure we're less reliant on people like Vladimir Putin for our energy baseload. So this country has led the way. We continue to lead the way. We take climate change incredibly seriously, which is why we're taking the action uh, that we are. Yeah, it's interesting you say you've led the way. I mean, Britain's lost leadership in climate action and political failure means progress has stalled. This is according to the government's own climate change committee. You also had Lord Goldsmith accusing the Prime Minister of personally being apathetic towards environmental issues. And you point to nuclear as being the solution to all of this. And Labour would say that you've been shambolic in dealing with that. That in fact, that in 2009, they had approved something like 10 sites and only one of those has been built on. And in 13 years, there's been no progress progress in nuclear power. Yeah, well, look, we won't take any lessons from the Labour Party on nuclear power. It remains the case that every nuclear reactor ever completed and deployed in this country was completed and deployed under a Conservative government. That will be the case again with Hinkley Point C, Sizewell C, and our small modular reactor programme that we're uh, launching today through Great British Nuclear. This country has led the way in terms of cutting CO2 emissions whilst creating high-wage, high-skilled jobs and is leading the G7 in doing so. We were the first major nation to legislate for net zero. We remain committed to that. And this Prime Minister has created to the Department for Energy Security and Net yes, Zero. So the idea that we're not sorry. taking this seriously I'm, is, I'm afraid, but simply I'm, for the birds. I quote back to your very own Climate Change Committee. They say the UK is missing climate targets on nearly every front. This is from the government's own advisers. Yeah, well, I don't accept that. You know, we're actually meeting our targets. We're leading the world. We led the world at COP when we held it in Glasgow a few years ago. We still remain a country to which the rest of the world look to, to see how they can grow their economies whilst cutting emissions. We've done that. We want other countries to join us on that journey. And launching Great British Nuclear today, increasing our nuclear fleet, launching the small modular reactor programme will actually allow us to do that. By the way, it's not just nuclear. We're also investing at pace in other technologies, renewable technologies, because the first, second, third and fourth largest largest offshore wind farms in the world operating off the coast of Great Britain right now. So we have a record of which we can be proud. I am proud. Yes, of course, we can do more. And we are, which is what today's about. Now, talking about off the coast of Britain, um, down in Dorset, um, we've got this, this situation, this, uh, this barge, which is just moored into place uh, this morning while we've been on air, the Bibby Stockholm. 500 migrants are destined uh, to take up residency there. Um, how, do, how, do you see, how do you see this in the fight against stopping the boats? Well, of course, last night we had the surprise and welcome development in the House of Lords that saw uh, our Stop the Boats bill uh, move, complete its passage through the building behind me and now go on towards Royal Assent. And that will put a legal necessity on future UK governments to remove anybody that comes to the United Kingdom illegally. This is all part of our plan to stop the boats and stop the pernicious and vicious trade in human life. If we are able to do that, then we won't have to house people in barges off the course of Dorset or in hotels around the country, which I think the British people would be very uh, keen to see. It's absolutely essential that we stop these vicious gangs trading in human lives, putting innocent people in danger on boats in the channel. This is all part of our wider uh, plan to do that. It's one of the Prime Minister's top priorities. And as I said, I was very pleased to wake up to the news this morning that the House of Lords has seen fit to approve uh, our bill so we can move on to the next stage. Yeah, but we're still not entirely clear on, on how much this uh, Bibby Stockholm Asylum floating hotel, as it's being described, uh, is going to save or indeed cost uh, the government. Um, five, six, is it six million a day for 51,000 yeah. asylum seekers in hotels. And, and how exactly is this going to work? I mean, these people in Portland, I believe that the local council can't object to it because it's cleverly positioned on water, yet there are real concerns about a group of 500 people who aren't allowed to work whilst they're waiting for their claims to be processed, but though the vast majority will be approved. It is a bit of a sort of local disaster, is it not? 
Uh, well, look, this is exactly why we need to stop uh, people coming into this country illegally. We don't want to be housing people in barges off the uh, English coast. We don't want to be putting people up in hotels around the country at vast cost to taxpayer. But the only way we can stop that, the only way we can do that, is by freeing up the space in the asylum system to deal with genuine uh, claims for people coming to this country. And the only way we do that is by stopping the boats on the English Channel right now. That's what this bill is all about. That's why we want to see our Rwanda plan uh, come into fruition. And that's why we're fighting the decision in the courts uh, as we speak.